depression. Bipolar. Schizoaffective. Agoraphobia. Anorexia nervosa. Obsessive compulsive disorder. Social anxiety disorder. Multiple personality disorder. BBC Three asked us to film our own lives. <laughs> to get inside our minds. Why? In order to understand what it's like to have a mental health disorder. <laughs> I would be the first boy dinosaur. Put my glasses on. Do I look a bit more glam now? The moment we find out, I felt mental. I don't think anyone understands. To learn to live with our condition. So what? <laughs> and the challenges we face along the way. Bex <laughs> just fainted inside the club. Them should be so much. People. People. We're so angry. We're going to pull her face off. <laughs> We're not all axe murdering people. We don't all go crazy at the flip of the switch. Where is my mind? This is our story. 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 Right. In our own words. In our own words. In our own words. This is our story. In our own words. Can be a start Feels like a baboo You're still out It's like a bad day It never ends I feel the chaos around me I think I don't Ooh, to it's me, Abby Um, basically My care coordinator came around on Tuesday last week And she gave me all this information about bipolar As I'm literally like just coming to terms with the fact that I have bipolar And trying to understand it and stuff I better learn to accept that There are things in my life I can't control They say love are nothing but the sword I don't even know Bipolar disorder is a mood disorder which is kind of categorised really as extreme highs and manic lows and I think it's really difficult to explain really I can't do this I'm so bad <laughs> so it talks about how there's two extremes um, and she drew this like diagram for me and I thought it was quite interesting so I might draw it as well everybody's life is like kind of like this it's got ups and downs and ups and ups a bit more and then down a bit, kind of thing like that. If these were the norms like, that people live in. And then she drew how like someone with bipolar would be, so their lines would be slightly higher and slightly lower. <laughs> Sorry. And then a bit higher. And they might stay up there and they could come right down. So they're just outside of the norms kind of thing. Basically, everybody has highs and lows in their lives, but for some people, they're more extreme, and that's when it's known as bipolar. Well, because I've only really just been diagnosed, I'm only really starting to begin to get in touch with what that's what that really is like for me and what what is my illness and what isn't my condition when I was around uh, well as far back as I can remember really I haven't I, I couldn't remember a time that I had been happy I knew that there was something wrong he has a lot of fear of the unknown which might be in the unknown 
So I didn't really talk about it for quite a while. I didn't know they were depression at the time. I thought it was something which everybody went through, everybody suffered from. When they told me that I had anorexia, I was just like, no, I don't. <laughs> There's definitely nothing wrong with me at all. I felt mental. And I hated that feeling. I felt like people would label me as crazy. There's no way back from here. One minute I was at school and I was in a lesson, just being a normal teenager. That afternoon I collapsed. I was taken to hospital in an ambulance straight from school and by that evening I had a nasogastric tube up my nose because I couldn't feed myself. I was at um, a dangerously low weight. This is my room on the ward. It's a pretty average room. It's quite empty now because I've been packing. Hey, guess who I am? Guess who I am? <laughs> she walked towards you with her head down low. She wondered if there's a way out of the blue Who's gonna take her home this time? She knew that this time Hi Tilly's room Thanks for having me As well as I'd hoped, I haven't really managed to stick to my meal plan. The thought of eating and eating makes me want to die. I wish someone could just take it all away and make it all better. If only it worked like that. agoraphobia and depression. I thought it would be a good idea to show you my boundaries. If we were to go up here, then up the road is town. I don't go that far. Ooh, makes me feel sick just looking at it. Agoraphobia is not a fear of spiders. That's arachnophobia. I have a fear of leaving my house. That's my house, somewhere there. I have a fear of being in public places. I'm very lucky in the fact that I have a boyfriend that understand, doesn't understand, but is supportive. So this is Jake. Say hi, Jake. Hi, Jake. But I know that it's really difficult on him. What do you do for me every day, Jake? I go to the shop about once or twice a day, <laughs> uh, maybe three times. What else do you do for me? Cook and clean. No, that's such a lie. Um, okay, Mr. Hero, what are we doing this afternoon? We are going to attempt to go to the pub. It's only there. There it is. It's there. Opposite, so it's not that far. No. Nope. Um, to go for like a drink, got the day off. I'm going to show you what I have to pack in my bag. Beta blockers, propranolol, lol, gas mask. Is it called a gas mask? I'd say oxygen 
thing. Yeah, that's it. We're now going to attempt to go to the pub. Same again. How does my condition affect relationships? I don't envy him at all. I don't think anyone does really. Because he has to put up with it and if I'm having a really bad day, I'll get mad at him because he's the nearest person and he's the person that I see all day every day um, other than when he's at work. So he gets like the direct hit almost. <laughs> I was thinking about Jake and and when I first met Jake and how I was this like bright and beautiful and bubbly and you know just just so different. I don't think he realizes how much I care about him and how grateful I am for everything that he's done and all the stuff that he has to put up with. And if he left me I just don't know what I'd do. I just want to be that person again. I just want to be her. And I don't know how. Have you pressed play? massive stigma attached to mental health. There is a stigma attached to having a mental health disorder. They see it as like sometimes being dangerous even, like, but it's not like that, people aren't like that. It's generally portrayed as they're so crazy and dangerous. <sighs> they're going to hurt everyone when really it's the other way around. I mean, having a mental illness just makes you so vulnerable to being exploited by people. It's seen or it's viewed by some as a weakness as something that you should just snap out of or man up. Perhaps it's because you can't see it, so it's not like a broken arm. Because it's all in there and it's through emotion, people can't sympathise with you. I had nothing but stress trying to deal with the comments that I received from it, the amount of endless freak. Mental health in itself is controversial to the general society, but then to have this particular condition on top of it makes it so much harder. I would be the first boy dinosaur. No. <laughs> can imagine a party of strangers all living in your body, that's probably the best way to describe dissociative identity disorder. Um, they believe that DID actually comes about in childhood before the age of 10 if a child has suffered a severe trauma and um, what happens is that if a person can't fight or flight, which is like our our natural response to do so, the brain will cut off a part of itself almost, a part of its its being, so that the person doesn't have to remember what's gone on. This compartmentalised part eventually becomes an alter and then a person. Thank <laughs> you.
<laughs> do you ever find my DID distressing or upsetting or anything? Or do you find it hard to be with me? All of the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's extremely distressing. No, it's not at all. We fear. But I mean, it, it does have its days where things could be a little bit easier. <laughs> Strangely enough, I know a lot of people have run to the run to the hill screaming, <laughs> but no, it's um, it, to me, it's just something that's well, I, well, obviously, it's not normal, but it's um, I, mean, I don't think it any different to anyone else. <laughs> They've all got that um, little something that makes them special. Okay, um, we're actually going to town with me and Vicky together. Say hello. You've got a very flamboyant club camp. This is my theme. Come and walk with me. the person who's not afraid to let anyone know who he is or what he's about and everything else. Emo, artistic, perceptive, insecure, blunt, dark, honest, intimidating, and vain. Yeah those are what I am like. My job is really a negative job and like I'm called like a persecutor or whatever which means like that I'm I don't know sort of made to do or take the bad stuff. Jake then, little star-studded movie cast member. Let me just check the lighting here. Is it, is it better if I draw the curtains in a little bit? <laughs> Wonderful attitude, really cares about everyone else and will protect, will do anything you can possibly can for Jess and everyone else. He's very sensitive but will help anyone. On the inside, I am a, I'm an actor, um, Hollywood actor, and I'm also a pop star. I on it earlier. Um, can you see this? I would describe myself as shy, curious, smart, talkative, and opinionated. Because I have strong opinions for a ten-year-old. <laughs> and then you've got Ollie. He's just the sweetest little kid ever. Me and Gaz Gaz are eating jelly beans. <laughs> 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 uh, are you going to give me the coffee? Uh, oh. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Very, very inquisitive, intelligent, cute. Yeah, um, we are making food. You can, like, be dynamic. Okay, we'll be have to stand in the corner. But I can't get you all in if I stand close. But it is okay. Can you get the food in? You've got Jamie, which cares a lot for people, um, is, a, is a very big extrovert. <laughs> I guess I will class myself as the organiser and the protector of the system. I sort of run, tend to run Jess, Jess's life on a daily basis as in like I sort of organise what we're doing, when we're doing it. I, I sort, I'm sort of the middleman of everyone so Jess doesn't talk to Ed because they don't like each other. Jess has a hard time communicating with Ollie so I am the go-between for everything so Jess has to come to me and then I'll go to them and then I sort of go back and forth between everybody. Well maybe I am a crook. <laughs> Steal your heart away yeah, Everyone's got that of their own essence that makes them them. And so it's, it's nice, it's wonderful. Would you change anything? Uh no. Not really. Actually you know there's one thing and that's that I'd make her more open about it. She has been more open to her friends, but I wish she'd be a little bit more open to other people about it and not be so af afraid to tell other people. Because oh, you I honestly feel that the biggest challenges that I face with this condition is purely how other people see it. Um, the fact that people don't believe it is an extremely common thing that I come into near enough every day. If I was to make 
the condition more aware. You know, that is my ultimate goal. difficult to explain to someone what it feels like to be in a depressed state of bipolar. I just want to be normal sometimes. <sighs> the best way I can describe it is like a black smog which surrounds you and it wraps itself around you. Your organs, your eyes, in your ears, everything is completely intoxicated by this black smog. <laughs> This is my sister, Ellie. Hello. What do you think about like my weird ways? It's weird. But I get it. You get it. I get you. What about the bipolar? Yeah, you are mad. <laughs> How do you find it to have a sister with the condition? <laughs> So, Mum, what do you think bipolar is? Bipolar. It's like a bit of a split in your personality, I think. It's not. That's not what it is. <laughs> no, but I'm saying on the face of it, sometimes everything can seem okay. I mean, you're not manically depressed all the time, in my view. Do you know what manically depressed is? Um, suicidal tendency? No, Mum. Manic depression is the same as bipolar. How do you find having a daughter with that condition? It's really difficult. It's really challenging. Um, I obviously wish, like any parent would, for their child that it wasn't a condition my daughter had, um, because at the end of the day all you want is your child to be happy. I wouldn't have you any other way than you are. Mm -hmm. I think you're a fantastic person. Then you know that. My moods, they can be the most controlling thing in the world. You know, I can go from being in a hypermanic state where I am so out of control. So me and Vicky, just here, are going to the toilet. How exciting! <laughs> I'm so talkative, I can't stop talking. And this man's playing the piano and it's amazing and I really want to go just go dance with him. I think I'm the most amazing person in the world. I have this newfound confidence. <laughs> and it's like out of control. People don't understand that that's not actually me, that's my illness taking over. Does it give you a buzz when you do things like this? Yeah, I love it. Probably won't hear. But I can go from this really high state to being rock bottom on the floor. I feel really shit. Really shit. My friend came around to tell me some like brilliant news and I should be so happy for her, but I'm not. I just keep thinking that everything's going to change and how much of a failure I am. <laughs> so it's useless to sit in here saying it's shit. 
I'm not achieving. I know that. Getting a diagnosis. That's like the first step. Um, and then from here, I suppose, it's a learning process. Like. <laughs> right, these are things I find like, troublesome with my bipolar, yeah. If I wake up on in a in a bad mood, like I can be ready to start fights, start on anyone. And people don't understand that's my condition. So young, so how for you to know, no, no. I'm walking down the street. <laughs> If someone's looking at me funny and it's a bad day or something, for instance, I'm going to react how I normally wouldn't act. Trust me, that's, that's how my bipolar affects me. If you're deemed like dangerous enough or unwell enough, they can take you off the street and put you in hospital. This is a dungeon, the dungeon hospital where they had man up in store. At the same time, I'm happy they do help me. They do help me, and you know? they're trying to help me. That's the, that's that's the main thing I'm gonna say about the system, though. They are trying to help, but this is the place. This is the place. Yo, this is my crib. there not cheap that wallpaper there not cheap that bow system not cheap <laughs> obviously i'm showing my house as well because i don't know what you expect of someone mental health maybe expect to see like poo clumps around the house or something or some sort of mental behavior but no like <laughs> and here is the missus the arguing the arguing girl <laughs> I'm gonna ask you, babe, even though we never had this conversation, you tend to tell me, yeah, that it's fucked living with me. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, cut out the serin. I find it hard when you're very hyperactive, you're more happy, you can be more sad, you can be more aggressive than on the usual day. When I'm like that, is that me though? Ashley, like normal, normal Ash? Or... No, that's not you. Exactly. That's, you, that's um, the point. That is the problem, isn't it? Yeah, that's the problem. Cause everyone seems to mix it with my personality, including you. Like, I forget. That's the problem I face, isn't it? Because it's hard because I live with you day in, day out. So it's like, well, am I supposed to write down all the 10 different personalities that you have and flip it, tick them off when I see it? Like, I try to treat you as Ashley all the time. So you mm. don't feel like I'm treating you like, you're, you're not normal. I'm sorry. <laughs> 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 out in the bits all day long, out in the strip. Today they've got a little open mind thing going. That's Peter. The guy's in charge of everything. When you come down and you get in the studio and you get on the mic, I think that what you're talking about on the mic through your lyrics yeah. shows that you've got real insight into your life and your experiences and your health. And I think that that is really the best therapy. Yeah, sorry. Ready, Ashley? Yeah, want to record, yeah? Yeah, man. I'm just going to spit everything and arrange it after it. Life's been hard, tribulations are all in mind. I struggle like the girls are put on weave in the morning time. If I'm not people, listening to music, I'm writing, I'm writing bars to music. Because if you're thinking about music, you're not thinking about hard grinds and hard life. So that's how anything creative, anything that can intercept a person's 
negative thinking pattern is, is good for you. I'm gonna give you a sign. Life's been depressing from an early age born. Life's been depressing from an early age torn. Rips apart, hurt in the worstest way. My mind brings you back to the worstest days. I can't remember my next bar, I'll just throw it. And I say, peace. Hi Jake. Hello. What day is it today? It's Valentine's Day. No, it's Thursday. It's Thursday. It's Valentine's Day. <laughs> mm. What are we doing today, Jake? Um, we're making... Couldn't really go out for a meal, um, so we thought we'd make pizzas. Don't really want to go as per usual, but not really a lot I can, I can't, it's difficult, I don't really want to let people down. I want to try and push myself because summer's coming up and I don't want to be stuck in all summer again. Ready? Jake is ready. getting ready. <laughs> He's cleaning his shoes, um, and we're about to go to the pub opposite. Um, I'm not taking any beta blockers today because I'm going to be drinking, so I don't want to get weird. Enjoying yourself. This is Helena. Say hi, Helena. Hi, my name's Helena. <laughs> this is Anna. Hi, my name's Anna. This is Emma. Oh, Emma! Um, so, we're still in the pub. Hi. I'm really pleased that Bex has come out tonight because it's our friend's birthday. And oh it's my always, God, it's, you're making me smile. No, it's, 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 always, it's always better when Bex is there. Um, we are thinking about going into town, which is going to be quite difficult, um, obviously, for me, but we're going to give it a go. It's roaming. Okay, so we're on our way to um, town. So how do you feel? I feel better, the fact that we got a taxi, but I do feel that as soon as we get into that place, I'm going to be sick. Yeah. I don't know the bus just look at me and be like... They won't look at you, they'll look at you fine. Come on, positive. You're with you know me. What? You're with me and Zana. You're two Even, best friends. Can I have ABC, please? A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, B. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Just fainted and 
inside the club, so we're coming straight back out. To be fair, I am fucking impressed you went in there. Because I wouldn't have done. It's a lot busier than I thought it was going to be. It's pretty busy. On the it scares side. the shit out of me, and I don't have what you have, so... On the bright side, at least we can get kebab earlier. Yeah. just had my telephone assessment to see whether I qualify for CBT um, basically a psychologist calls you up and asks you loads of questions about stuff um, and you have to fill in one of these lots of different questions like um, how nervous have you felt over the last week and they said that I will be put on the waiting list, which is good, but the waiting list is apparently four months at the moment, which isn't so good. Which means that I've got another four months of being trapped. Is there enough support for for young people like you? No. Yeah, no, maybe. I like to think there is. I mean, I got support and it, I know it is out there. I didn't know where to turn to, who was there, what was available. There's so many places in Liverpool to go to and I'm hoping it's like that across the rest of the UK. When you'd go to a doctor, first thing I would prescribe you is tablets straight away. It's not therapy first, it's tablets then therapy. That's not good. I think it's far too easy to slip through the net as a young person with a mental health problem. Personally, I really don't think there is enough support. I've been through years of being on waiting lists, crying out for help. You have to prove that you're in enough and stuff and it's just it's not right that's something that I I always had um, and I just sort of thought it was normal for a long time and I think because I was younger people used to just sort of work around that so I didn't notice it so much because it was just accepted that when you're young you're a little bit shy so so people just worked around it but then as I got older I realized that people were sort of saying you know it's a bit silly why can't you do this why you know <clears throat> why are you so shy what have you got to be afraid of Suddenly something can just make me feel really insecure about the way that I look. I mean, I always am, but... And then suddenly everyone that looks at me, I'm just like, they look at me because of what I'm wearing and because I'm stupid and because I look fat and because they're judging me. There they were situations where, where now I, I you know, recognise that 
it terrifies me. This leads me to talk about something which is kind of odd, I guess. Um, I'm also a model. I'm not hard as a rock, I'm just not easy to break, but not as a career or anything, just sort of part time, I guess. I'm just hoping this time that it's all in my mind. People are always surprised when they either know that I'm a model and then find out that I have confidence problems or when they know all my problems and then find out I'm a model. <laughs> They're always surprised and I can completely understand why. It does seem really weird. When you're shooting, I get many chances at creating the perfect image. Whereas in real life, I've just got me. It's things that like I'd never even noticed really when I was growing up. I've been with my boyfriend for a while now and I'd noticed things like, you know, I'd, I'd never make my own phone calls and asking him to do it, he would say, well, why can't you do it? I feel guilty because I'm, I'm causing, you know, problems and probably getting on people's nerves. It's more that it's, you know, kind of fear of things that maybe aren't necessarily that threatening. You know, and if you can conquer enough situations, you know, by, you know, by trying to just kind of confront them and be yourself in those situations. It was really interesting though, because like he made me think about school, which I haven't thought about in ages, and about how middle school image became a thing in middle school. And that was when I was at my biggest, my heaviest weight, whereas in primary school, I hadn't. I'd always been nervous of people. When you're a really young kid, it's like not that much of an issue because, you know, you don't really care. So that was the first time when I started being scared of people judging me and what they thought of me. I was on antidepressants for my depression um, a while ago. I took them for about a week and then I decided to come off them. Um, one, because they didn't make me feel very good um, but two mostly because I didn't want to treat it like that I don't want to rely on a tablet to shut me up you know or shut up that part of me I want to kind of sort it out myself I've just got up and I'm going to make my breakfast, which is um, four cereal and two slices of toast with bread. So that means 300 mils of milk. I've used only plastic cutlery for quite a long time um, now. That's Honestly, because um, I don't like the taste of metal in my mouth, but obviously um, at the unit that's classed as um, like an eating sort of behaviour.
Um, I thought I'd show you what my um, current meal plan uh, looks like, which is quite extensive. I'm vegetarian and I've also got quite a severe nut allergy. So obviously that cuts out meat and nuts, obviously, um, out of my diet already. But then at the unit we're allowed three dislikes. I've put down as my dislikes mushrooms, which I absolutely hate, spicy food and beans and pulses, which I managed to get into one. Um, I guess that makes it quite difficult as a vegetarian because they're quite kind of typical sort of like vegetarian-y foods. So breakfast is a full cup of cereal, lunch is a standard main course, and then a quarter past three we have a snack, and then tea, which is a lighter meal, a full portion main course. It's not easy um, following that. There's one side of it in the sense that my eating disorder is telling me that I shouldn't be eating that much, but then the, there's the other side in that sometimes I physically can't fit that much in and like I feel ridiculously ridiculously full um to the point where I'm in so much pain that I just can't carry on. Am I crazy or am I blind? Someone taught me about my mind oh. Got to make the decision, do I listen to my head or do I listen to the stupid voice inside? telling me not to have dinner. Do I have dinner or do I not have dinner? Why does this stupid illness have to make everything so much more difficult? I feel like I'm having to pick the lesser of two evils here. I don't want to do either. Well, actually, I don't want dinner. Living with my condition, I think the normal things that I miss out on are probably social situations. The amount of friends I've lost because of it, because I've been having problems and I've argued with them and I can't say to them, look, I've got OCD, my mind's not in the right place at the minute, I need some time away from you. a romantic relationship that wasn't hosted over the internet. How do you mean? What do you mean you're not coming by? I it's hard to find something that sort of can accept me for who I am and what I've got. Often don't feel worthy of people's affection, of people's love. You're giving me the coldest stare like so not only if you miss out on the social side of things, you've got things like education and work when you're just not up to it. I do miss quite a lot of uni through my illness though, which is, you know, not brilliant. You're giving me the coldest stuff. Normal things I miss out on day to day can be things like parties and social events. Just because I am so anxious, I can't go. few close friends of mine and at school it went around like wildfire what I had and what I did have um you know I had this condition and I wasn't pretending and my friends a lot of my friends stopped talking to me I wasn't going to tell anyone at university. I was going to come here and I was I was going to act normally and nothing nothing was going to be revealed. Girly night ready? Hi! 
two of my flatmates who I'm best friends with now sat me down and said, Jess, why do you change all the time? I said, what do you mean? What do you mean, why do I change? And they were like, every day you're different. All the time you're different. Your reactions are different. One minute you're fine, next minute you're grumpy, next minute you're happy, next minute you're sad. Have we done anything? Is it, is it something you used to tell us about? And then I just broke down and I told them everything. I said, this is what's going on and I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry that I haven't been so fluent and but they were just so grateful that it made sense to them now. And I didn't expect that reaction. And do you know what? Ever since that I've been telling people here, my friends here, everyone's been so accepting. Have you ever had any arguments between your personalities before? <gasps> Would you mind holding the camera on this? Honestly, right. Um, <laughs> yes. Uh, the other day, actually, you should have seen it. Obviously, you guys wouldn't have. Um, Jamie and Ed were having an argument. Jamie was out cooking and Ed was arguing about um, food because Ed is anorexic and doesn't like eating food, but Jamie needs food to feed us. Like, you could just hear Jamie, like, saying, like, oh, for fuck's sake, Ed, and, like, just, just, like, just never there on. And then you'd hear this, like, oh, my God, bitch, don't start on me. And then you just hear, like, all this, like, the way it was going on. And it was just, like, I was... And all you, all you would see from a normal point of view is just me talking to myself in funny accents, cooking at the same time. <laughs> first poster for our site cafe. Look at this! So it's all in Welsh and in English and yeah, it's right on the psychology board. So, should be good. I'm really, really excited. Um, I've just got to hang up the rest of these now. So there's about ten to go. One down, ten to go. A bit muddy. How pretty the trees are. Oh, look at the... Is that a snowman? What the hell? Hello. Um, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, that girl's got way too much eyeliner on. Hey, I am called Sophie. Oh, it's not the camera with my knee. When you gravitate towards yourself When I was nine years old I was put on antidepressants because I had an eating disorder and a phobia of vomiting. You can't help, can't help when your mind goes. Okay. Looking through the family album of me. How old am I here? Four. So I was pretty normal. Five happy little child. It was me at school. Gordon Bennett. And then here, I'm nine, and this is when I first stopped eating, when I had my eating disorder, which is fun. Um, you can't really tell there, but I was pretty ill. I looked quite skinny. And that was because I was sick in public on the way to school, and then two weeks later I was sick again at a big event. And for some reason my brain thought that was terrifying, and... I developed a really bad phobia. That happened when I was nine, and then... I don't know, it lasted a year, and that was when I was put on antidepressants and had therapy. And then, when I was 13... I don't think I've got pictures of me when I was 13. There we am. Gordon Bennett. Look at my hair. Oh, God. And there's me. I was 16 there. Didn't go out of the house very often. Just, oh, are you on? It's on, yeah. Is she here? You're not even in. There you are. <laughs> Introduce yourself, Esther. Oh, what do I say? Say hello, I'm Sophie's friend, Esther. Turn it on to yourself. <laughs> Hi, I'm Esther. I'm Sophie's best friend. <laughs> Do you love me, Harry? <laughs> it's because your voice is like... She's a bitch, right? <laughs> <laughs> in. Right. How long have we known each other? Uh, we've known each other since we were about four or five years old. So that's 20 years, 20 long years. 20 good years. 20 strong, beautiful strong, years. Yeah. 
When did you know yeah. I had a phobia of being sick? That must have been in primary school, yeah. yeah. I, I think back then, I think I knew that you were worried about being around lots of people. I think that's what I kind of understood it as, I think, back yeah. then. It's more like you didn't like eating in front of people, eating in front of people and stuff. Mm. So I know that you like to keep that quite private. Yeah. Did you know? I'm on is Venlafaxine and I'm on 75 milligrams. Yeah. Take me through the pyramid. Now I've been taking this for probably four years. Before that I was on Citalopram for quite a few years. I went to see my doctor and said I'm feeling fine and dandy, can I come off my tablets? And he, he agreed, he's like, yeah. And this is the first uh, time in my life that I've um, attempted to come off my presence. The withdrawals are pretty horrific and um, it scared me a bit, really. Let me just turn it off now, I've got to try and find the button. Bye. These are all the tablets that I'm currently taking. <laughs> There's quite a lot. Okay, this is my medication drawer. It's not in a particularly sexy package. It actually looks really boring. I'm waking up to ash and dust. I wipe my brow and I sweat my rust. I'm breathing in the chemicals. Yeah. So many different medications now. Lost count, I can't even remember what they were originally, you know. I'm currently, I've been on loads of different ridiculous amounts of things, but I'm currently on Prozac, Floxetine. Floxetine, Supermax 10 milligrams, and it's basically a an antidepressant. They put me on Sertraline, which is an antidepressant, um, and Sometimes I get asked if it has any side effects. Well, um, yeah, I think it does, you know. <laughs> oh, double-sided. You can get diarrhea, headaches, dizziness. Depression, feeling strange, nightmare, anxiety, agitation, nervousness, decrease, sexual interest. <laughs> Nobody has sex with me, it's fine. <laughs> Poor appetite, which I found a little bit stupid seeing as I also have anorexia. Cancer. Off. Coma, closing up of throat, can't wait for that one, um, heart attack and sudden death. Not the death will be very sudden after all of those things. Testing problems, ear infections, cancer, swelling glands. Whoa, 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 roll back. Cancer. I'd love to come off medication, I'd love to be medication free, but I'm just not ready. So I've been on them for nearly eight years now, seven, eight years. Which is never good, really. But I'm, try I'm trying to get off them. I, d I don't want to be on, on them for the rest of my life.
is because it kind of gives me an hour of feeling normal. Yeah. Oh no. <laughs> always spilling and spilled it all over my shoe. And I always do it. If I didn't have a drink, I, w I wouldn't feel normal. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so, like, very concentrated. Um, <sighs> having anxiety anyway, and depression, sort of, the both are like the anxiety and depression and they both work together so it's like if you get anxiety that can cause depression if you get depression that can cause anxiety so they can just rub off on each other like so it's like a circle you know and then I start drinking because I want to get rid of it but then that actually makes it worse in the end and end up drinking more so you can't win Try and smile now, right? Yeah. Come on then. Yeah. Is that your smile? Yeah. Can I do a better I, one? I used to smile a lot more. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Lost my way, fell down a hole. No one's gonna come. And save my throat Lost my way No going back I stuck back here And that is that me in London in Oxford Circus and it was the kind of perfect body that anyone would want. When I look at this, I see me, it is me, but it's me at a different time in life. This was before I even thought, I didn't know mental health problems existed or I didn't know about them. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, that's all smoking. I used to be really physically fit really good muscles i felt amazing i used to train every day I feel so so many different things going on in my mind sort of lost the world to talk now i have to go sorry just can't do it at the moment May contain the urge to run away, but hold her down with soggy clothes and breeze blocks. Shedders in your fever, scream me again. Never kisses, or do you ever send a full stop? Do you know where the walking go? They go along to take your home. Way down, how we build our um, it's Monday morning, so I'm going to have to go in and get weighed this morning. Uh, I'm actually pretty terrified because um, I know that I haven't managed to make the weight gain this week. It's just been too difficult. I don't. I just don't know how to do it. I just don't. I don't know how people just kind of eat normally. <laughs> the only thing that I feel like I can do out of desperation is water load which is essentially just drinking like drinking a lot of liquid to falsify my weight i feel like i've got no other choice like i've screwed things up and i don't know i don't know what else i can do 
Uh, I'm just about to get weighed and I'm actually terrified, like totally and utterly, completely terrified. Just let's get weighed. As far as they're concerned, I gained 0.8. It's in the requirements of 0.5 to 1 kilo gain that I need to make a week. Um, however, what they don't know is that actually that wasn't a true weight. And I did water load quite a lot. Oh, it's, it's a messy business. I've been trying to do it right I've been living a lonely life I've been sleeping here instead I've been sleeping in my bed Sleeping in my bed I kind of feel crappy for having to keep people awake. I don't mean to. I just, I don't feel tired. I've done everything. I've like, I've even read a book. I never read books. I don't like books. So... But that didn't settle me off. So show me family All the blood that I will bleed I don't know where I belong I don't know where I went wrong I, can I wish every day that I could be the five foot six brown hair, blue eyed movie star that I am on the inside. Imagine yourselves. Imagine you being stuck in a body. Stuck in someone's body that isn't yours. And you have to live their life. You can't live your life because that's not your body to live. That's not, that's not yours to take. I fed up of being viewed as an imaginary person or a part or a fragment or just, just something made up, something non-existent. I'm rambling and I'm feeling kind of sorry for myself. I get to that stage sometimes. Never mind though, huh? Anyway, thanks for listening. Trees will speak before you listen. I'm supposed to be going to a Christmas party in my hospital. I don't want to. I don't want to. Downstairs, yeah. I'm trying to calm myself down. It's really hard. They're all Alex's parents' friends. Um, they're all older than me, and like, I feel like, like lower class. I just can't imagine right now being able to respond. Because I mean, I feel like I'm just gonna break down. <laughs> well, I come across like I don't want to talk to people because I'm just not bothered. That it's not. It's cause I don't think you do. I know I do sometimes. It's not them. It's me. It's me being scared of them, but I know there's no reason for most of the time. I'm 
have decided I'm going to stay upstairs for a while and um, I would like to go downstairs a bit later but now I kind of feel like now that I haven't gone down, going down is going to be a big, bigger thing. Didn't you know I was waiting on you? Waiting on a dream that had never come true Didn't you know I was waiting on you? Hello. I'm having a crap moment, so I thought I'd document it. I don't know how far away this is from my face or if you can hear me. Um, I ran out of my antidepressants two days ago by accident because I put the prescription in for the wrong thing. Anyway, um, it's the weekend and I haven't been able to get a hold of any more until Monday. Um, and I'm fed up. <clears throat> Waiting on a dream that had never come true. Didn't you know I was waiting on you? Hello. I'm having a crap moment, so I thought I'd document it. I don't know how far away this is from my face, or if you can hear me. Um, I ran out of my antidepressants two days ago by accident because I put the prescription in for the wrong thing. Anyway, um, it's the weekend and I haven't been able to get a hold of any more until Monday. Um, and I'm fed up. <coughs> Just really in a really bad mood. I really hate everyone and hate everything. Cause I just heard some real bad news Real bad news Real bad news Real bad news <laughs> <laughs> I want to claw my face off and show up. God. <laughs> I'm so angry. I want to pull my face off. <laughs> I'm so angry. I felt like I was a bloody heroin addict come, going cold cut turkey. That's really how I felt and no one had ever told me that um, coming off antidepressants was this hard. I went to the doctor to get more medication and I said, look, I don't think I'm ready to come off these tablets. I need to go back on my full dosage because I can't function. And he said, yeah, you're not ready to come off them. So I'm back on them. And I've come to the conclusion that I'd rather be on them and want to get up then not be on them and be really ill and be horrible to everyone I thought I was ready and I'm not and I'm okay with that now anyway I think I've rambled enough get rid of your condition would you oh that's a tough one that's a very good question I don't think so it's made me who I am my obsessive personality is who I am. Without it, I don't know who I'd be. Might be really boring. <laughs> I'd like to say no, because it's who I am. But to be brutally honest, if somebody said, would, would you like me to take this away? Um, I would say, yeah, I'd snap the hands off. I don't want this to hold me back anymore. Years of my life have been wasted on this stupid illness. 
and it's so exhausting that I just want to live now. <laughs> I could get rid of my condition, I happily would really. It's incredibly debilitating and it makes simple, negligible things so hard. I'd probably get rid of the memories. I'd get rid of how it affects my life now. But I wouldn't take away the person it's made me. feels really strange but uh, it's my turn to move on my turn to fly and this is where the real challenge begins <laughs> why does this have to be so hard <laughs> why <laughs> I don't want to go down for tea. I don't, don't want to be like this anymore. i do anything in the whole world to be better. small things but all together and they all happened in one night. I was looking after my brother and I was trying to fight it the whole time. I knew that I needed to cry while I was trying to fight it. Yeah. The next few days after that I had headaches and I felt wobbly and I really felt it really bad. So, yeah. um, I've 
decided that I'm going to go back to the doctor and ask to be put on medication again okay. because um, it was really bad. Yeah, and no, don't get me wrong, I'm not um, anti-medication at all, you know, mm. quite the opposite. I definitely know its place. Um, mm. I just kind of, you know, recognise that, you know, you have got a, a, a good degree of control and you mm. do manage to get out of these things. Yeah. You know, the one side effect that people don't really kind of think about sometimes, or it's certainly not on any packets, is the sort of the psychological side effects sometimes that, um, you know, that it kind of takes away a bit of confidence in being able to get through those really difficult patches. <laughs> put me on two kinds of uh, medication one that will help sort out my anxiety and depression but that will probably mean I can't sleep and another one to make me sleep <laughs> Why do you do, babe? Why do you do? Um, oh, I took my first tablet that they gave me um, about an hour or so ago now, and I could feel something. <sighs> oh, suddenly don't feel too good. I feel a bit like happier and smiling. I'm sorry if I actually be sick, but I would. It's day two of my tablets. Mm. This might sound weird, but even though I noticed the side effects and even though I didn't really like them, I didn't feel in a bad mood. But then I don't know if that was just the placebo of taking it, you know, I don't know. But I'm gonna keep trying. <coughs> right now everyone's coming into the hall um, and yeah I just I just don't know I'm so so excited it's unbelievable so this is my talk this is where I'm set up for the evening it's coming up there and it comes on the big screen projector here so you can see everyone's filling up it's only 10 to 6 at the moment <gasps> places people places learn to fly learn to fly show the world how you try but don't let go until you know until you know me Wow, I honestly didn't expect like this many people to turn up today. I must tell you, I'm really, really nervous. I, I didn't, you know, when I was rehearsing this yesterday, I, I certainly didn't think that I would be this nervous, but I, I am a little bit today. Um, but first of all, I just want to say a big, big thank you for coming today to listen to my personal experiences for this condition, Associative Identity Disorder. I need one person to be a host, like me, and I need three people to be alters. Do I have any takes? Do I have any brave people? Yeah, go on up, go on up, great. Brilliant, now these bells just give you an example of what it's like when an alter is co-conscious and then they suddenly have a problem with something you're doing. So every time you have a problem with whatever Luke says, whatever Luke does, I want you to ring the bells and then I'll, I'll ask you why you have a problem with that. So, what time would you usually go to bed? About 4 o'clock in the morning. So, 4 or 5 in the morning for you, Luke. Um, what, 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 what time do you go to bed? Like, half 10. Half 10? Yes. What would be your ideal dinner? Um, I'll spend my chicken base and curries and all that. What's your problem with that? I'm vegetarian. Brilliant! Just like me! <laughs> this is great! <laughs> Thank you ever so much, my lovely authors and hosts. Thank you very, very much. Thank you ever so much for listening today, and it means so much to spread the awareness. You've all been amazing. Thank you very much. Everyone's 
leaving now. I had 200 people, 220 people, nearly had a full house turn up to my talk today. I am at awe, and really, I actually can't describe, like, tell you how amazed I am right now. So, thank you to everyone who showed up today, and I hope that everyone enjoyed it. Well, it's time to start the show. That's my heart and that's my soul. Thanks, guys. Thank you for listening. Bye.